as soon as they leave, you know, like it's it's because you love it, but you've got to be ready. You know, you've got to do those things before you kind of inch up, mm. I think. Yeah. And you've got to be willing to. Do you want to hear a funny story? Yeah. So um, I did a teaching degree and then I I sort of did a year of it. It was great. Um, and I spent the whole year teaching 30 kids. And I was like, this isn't the efficient way to do this. Because if you want to change the world, I knew the kids, you had to entertain kids, you know, had to get good morals and values into kids, right? Good lessons. David Attenborough, that sort of thing. That's the guys that inspired me. And then, so I did that. And then it was 2009 and I thought, well, I've done that. That's my flaw, right? And if nothing else, I can be a teacher and that's going to be wonderful. But I was like, what can I, what do I really want to do? If I'm going to take a home run swing at something, what do I want to do? And I thought film and ship to shore and that kind of stuff was, that seemed like the business. So I was looking around and I already had a degree and I didn't want to start again ground one. So I found like this, a postgraduate course there. I think it was a postgrad and then I led into a master's at Curtin Uni, 2009. And they said, oh, your guy's going to be Ron Elliott. And I said, and oh no, I was looking and it said Ron Elliott. And I was like, oh, so I remember that name from ship to shore credit. So I was like, went in there and I signed up and they're like, yep, you got the job, you know, you're in, did all my paperwork, signed me up. And then about a week before the unit, the, it started, they called me up and they said, listen, you're the only person in your course. They're not going to be running. <laughs> you have to go somewhere else. Oh, <laughs> and, no. and so they're like, I was like, well, what the hell, where am I going to go? I didn't have any plans. I don't know anybody. I didn't know anything. And they said, well, you know, have you tried, uh, have you tried uh, Murdoch University? And I was living, I grew up in River Lake. So I was kind of like, oh, huh, that's just down the road. That's quite handy, actually. So I ended up going there and... Um, Doing that, but we nearly worked. We were nearly uh, three years well, of that. Well, here's another one for us, and here's another one for you. I did half a teaching degree and bailed out of a dip here too in yeah. amongst it all that. I went, nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, my first year of teaching, because as I said, Baron Baron fell apart, and I needed I needed a job desperately. Yeah. I was like, I, Sue Taylor went. I went to Sue. Taylor. I was like. It's like three little pigs, you know. He went down. I ran to the house of sticks. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I gave that money back, Ron. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, what? You were like my <laughs> And I just like, and, and it was awful. No, I'm laughing now, but oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, it's a dark night of the soul. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, Got a bad next to the only wife. Only television set me free. I think it was the first series of, um, oh, that island show, you know, yeah. Survivor. Was first fun. season of Survivor oh, yeah? was the only show that would stop me going, we're all going to die, there's only a black well. You know, like really bad, like mm. it was bad. Anyway, I got a job at Curtin and it saved my life. Anyway, my first year I was helping this young guy who had scripts, a bit like you probably at that time, and he's just working on these scripts and there's this guy named Ben Young. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> Wait, he was on your show though. He was on um, he was on Ship to Shore, wasn't he? No, I don't think Ben was. No, yeah, he was a child star though. I swear to God. Oh, not oh, no, not on not on anything I directed. Okay, okay. His mum's pretty clever. Yeah, I met her in the writing game. So, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, but I never met Ben out there. Ah, okay. I only met him in a little glass room oh, where oh. we kind of. You know, next to the photocopy machine. I did the and It's opposite. like he would come in and go, yeah, I'm trying to write a script. I go, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I didn't know he was a director. I thought he was the child star. <laughs> so oh, okay. I ran into him or something or other. I'm like, oh, you're from that show. But I couldn't remember. I thought it was shipped ashore and then it, he thought I was insane, so I just stopped talking and left. But I like, but well, yeah. next time I swear, you see I swear him. he's a kid show. Yeah, I swear no, he, you might have. And, yeah. and, like, he's a very charming guy. Yeah, yeah. He came around once while he was trying his way up and he cleaned us out at poker. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Cautious tale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say, sorry? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> ben, I was just remembering Ben going... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it was pretty broke at the time. It was really Oh, good. at his low point? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Shit. He was that, pretty, those he, lo- he worked for so long trying to get his scripts up. I kid you not. Hmm. And and I worked on a couple of them and they deserve to be made. Yeah. And he worked so hard. Yeah. And just nut. And another two years, nut. And then just poop. Yeah. Yeah, what do they say, overnight success? And then you're like, yeah, but it took me 12 years yeah, to get to this overnight. Yeah. And every, you know, uh, um, I, I, was, I was writing a script with uh, Marty Wilson uh, yeah. recently and um, uh, it still might get up. It still might get up. <laughs> but 
But we were just working on this and I'm watching all the things he's doing and all the things he's working on and yeah. just all the way forward. And I scripted it something that deserved to be made again. Yeah. Um, and then it got the, the artist people got hold of it and said, oh, no, this should be more worthy, not, not a thriller. Yeah. And I was like, oh, death of a thousand cuts. But he's mm. just adding, like Ben, just adding, adding, adding. Yeah. Do you know Marty Wilson's peak? What do you, his peak, actually peak? thing that he's put out was the um the coffee chill ad that he did <laughs> did you remember that that was always playing into cricket it was it was gilchrist cricket era and oh, but it was wow. coffee 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 chill <laughs> coffee chill no he never showed it, was, <laughs> it played like it was like it's like a kfc ad it was playing like every cricket break every over between richie bernard like tony but but he wrote and directed that and he actually taught me a murdoch so i can laugh at him but when when we found out that he'd done that ad, oh my god, it was on fire! Like yeah, every time yeah. we see him, we'd yell, "Coffee chill, coffee chill!" That was brilliant. That that's, that's, that's my ship, that's my um, home and away confession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it is. It's just like you just the resilience, I guess. The self belief has hmm. to be there. You know, I um, I just spent five years writing it. Um, my third novel, my other novel's been published. Yeah. And no one wants to publish it. Mm. No, they, I don't like your characters. They don't like the characters? Yeah, there's no sympathy. Characters. And you wrote it about your family? <laughs> <laughs> no, I kind of wrote it about Donald Trump and a rock star, oh, so okay. I get it. But yeah, like, yeah. shit, you know, there's lots of books where the characters are like, you know, bonfire. There's heaps of books. Yeah. <laughs> like I can list like... Well, how do you write about Donald Trump and make him nice? Like, yeah. it's, I'm sorry. Do you but, think that nobody in Australia wants to publish it? Um, well, certainly they don't in Australia and that's a whole other thing about what films are made to, which is a whole other mm. hour, you know, and you, the market keeps changing all, all over the world. Yeah. And there's only five book publishers, there's only so many... Uh, you know, if you don't go through Screen West, where do you go? Things mm. like that. Which, by the way, Francis went to Film Australia, and those guys, those, those that team, mm. that team of three um, young filmmaking women, mm. couldn't get it up through Screen West. Got it. Got things up through Film Australia. Got the next one up through Stan. Mm. So there are other doorways. Yeah. There's, there was always two schools of thought. I really had two sets of lecturers at uni, the guys that said, if you can't make it here, you can't make it anywhere else. And another, another guy goes, pack your bags, go over there, have an adventure, and then make it there. They'll love you when you come back automatically. Exactly, for a couple of years. <laughs> well, you're the hot thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. But, no, it's a small town and, you know, it has yeah. a lot. But I, can't, but I can't say that in all honesty because of all the great, Stuff that's being pumped out in Perth at the moment. Yeah. It's re- it's a really good time to be yeah. a filmmaker in Perth. I think I saw on their um we're talking about Screen West now. I, talk, yeah. I saw on their uh, yearly publication, whatever that's called, the dot, one of the metrics of success is a dollar, how much they made per dollar invested, and it was decent. You know, I think it was like four forty nine or seven forty nine per dollar invested and stuff like that. So, um, but then you're like, well, what makes money? How do you make money? Yeah, and yeah. and which point of it and you know, what do I have to add to it that I don't want to add that's going to make it commercially viable? Yeah. And it's such a tough question to ask, especially if you're just a creative one that wants to write original stories. I, I, I think, and Marty, again, I just can't tell real stories without a, without potentially angering the people that I tell them just about. Do it wrong. We'll get them all <laughs> on the show at some there's point. There's a filmmaker <laughs> I once knew. <laughs> <laughs> Called M. Wilson. Wait, that's too obvious, too obvious. Marty W. <laughs> His script was about an African gang that was trying to make money and the, the, and they were young, fit, strong warrior boys and their head person realised they were being set up by the drug guy and wanted to go his own way and he met and was in love with an Anunga girl. And it was an all-out fucking nuts thriller of it was a race across, it still is a race across, it's, the script still exists. Yeah, the yeah. script still exists. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was a race across Perth. This guy trying to save himself 
and his Noongar girlfriend from the fucking na- the, the the worst cocaine dealer in the town. Yeah. It was just a great cracker story and slowly it became, oh, but we can't represent Noongar people like this without some, which is fair, by the way. I'm not saying yeah. we shouldn't get advice, but he had advice, so I'm never saying that. Yeah. And, and he had advice from African folk, so I'm not ever saying that. Mm. What I'm talking about is genre. Yeah. Genre alone. So I will never, ever say don't consult the people you're writing about. So I want that really clear. Yeah, yeah. But, but this was a fucking thriller. Yeah. <laughs> a kick-ass thriller that embraced those stories. It dragged along. It's like, it's, it's like a, you know, an American mafia film of yeah. the early period. Yeah. It drags along those other stories but it was an exciting story and slowly more and more people became involved and wanted to turn it into an art movie. Yeah, consultants. Death by consultant. Death by consultant. And yeah. death, but, but death by genre change. Mm. Like that is not, that wasn't that kind of film. Yeah. yeah Ivan Sen, the great... First Nations director, I love him. But what I lo- what I one of the things I love, he's he so understands genre. <laughs> yeah. He just takes genre and goes, and we're gonna put black fellas in it. <laughs> and it fucking works, doesn't it? <laughs> Why wouldn't it? It works. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they're really good films. Like it doesn't and those films will travel all around the world because they're genre films that yeah. happen to be in in a in a black town. You know, yeah. those things travel, you know? It's yeah. So, but <laughs> I've always wondered. I think Australia needs to buck up and less be less ashamed about who Australians are. Look at the good bits and export that in the world. Because anytime they've done that, Crocodile Dundee, The Castle, The Dish, you know that goes really well, and the world loves Australians. So why not put out good things like that instead of you know cheating at cricket and whatever? Yeah, I get yeah, and I think we. Ha- but how do you get that mix right? Hmm. When you haven't got, and this is gets back to our discussion about Screen West and a Film Australia, our model um, at that level, not at the level of making things for TV, you know, but our our model is based on a government policy. Yeah. And so like France is going through at the moment, and I'm guessing Spain is going to because they make fucking great film too. Mm. Uh, um, France and Spain have always been supported by a notion, and Canada, and I'll keep, I'll stop going, but a notion of protecting your culture and feeding into that. But in America is only rampant market. Yeah. And... How you get that balance right, because I think Australia kind of yo-yos it, you know. Sometimes we're just making and we do need to make films for a variety of cultures and a variety of reasons. We do need to have novels and stories that incorporate all the people who live in Australia, not just the cricket stars and the yeah. warriors, the white World War I warriors. Yeah. We have to incorporate stories but we can incorporate them and make them powerful stories. Yeah. And I think, I think too many audiences have been burnt <laughs> by watching a film that everybody said was great and going, I'm watching this because of the politics, not because of the good story. Yeah. And, and that is hard in Australia because we don't have enough people for a market. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. There's a the population support yeah. and dollar return on income, yeah. you know, but... Um, I watched a really interesting film just by complete accident. I was stuck in the Philippines and I, it was the only thing I downloaded for some reason on Netflix. It was called, um, oh shit, I can't remember, uh, 7-3 or some crap. And it was about a hip-hop group over in Mount Druitt in New South Wales. Oh, okay. And um, they were like uh, Polynesian kids or something like that. Mount Druitt is like, looks like the shittest place on earth. And uh, and I don't think that would have got funded by Screen Vic or any, you know it wasn't that kind of thing. It was like an urban yeah, story about yeah. a hip hop group that was really dangerous, and all their shows were getting cancelled because they were inciting violence and talking about 
you know, popping some guy and some, you know, it was, yeah. it was, it was American gangster culture. Yeah, no, I mean, man, Drew, it's fucking hardcore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but when I watched it, I went, this is so authentic, you know, this is so truthful. No, it's, I, 